Okay, this is the front door. Got a little separation right here. A little separation around the threshold. Let's go around that. The separation um, in the sealant separation around the front door threshold. The front exterior receptacle outlet is not GFCI protected. It does not have an in use cover. Where do termites live? In the ground. What do they eat? Dead wood. What's wood mulch? Dead wood on the ground next to your house. It's called a clue. It's called a clue. These bushes should be cut back away from the structure. Okay. They do not allow the walls to dry out as fast as they normally would. They uh, create shade, which is um, um, termites take advantage of that. They're instinctually, they know that they don't want to be out in the open. A um, couple reasons they have to have temperature controlled tunnels. Uh, but they also know that they're victims of prey, if that's it. Some of our rain gutters do not divert water far enough away from the structure. This is our integrated pest control system that they shoot the pest control juice in the walls. And that's torn off right there. Some of our windows are torn, so window screens are torn, torn, some of our windows are fogging. We got a little bit of wood repair on these two corners right here. We're coming along across the east side now. You know, along some of our window screens are missing. We've got soffit baffles. Again, bushes touching the house. Going along, we do not have kick out flashing over the fireplace, okay, where the vertical walls meet the roof covering. Okay, the rain gutter, there should be a one inch gap there. We should have kick out flashing, and then the flashing around the chimney itself see the way it's sticking out? The wind blown rain can get up underneath there, and uh, that flashing wasn't installed like it could have been. Um, it should have been closer to the wall and sealed. And then when you look underneath there, and because the rain gutter is next to the chimney, and because we don't have kick out flashing, you see wood rot right in there. Over here. The rain gutter comes next to the house. Doesn't have kick out flashing. That's why you have all that repair up there. Coming on and down, more torn screens. Some of these windows are fogging. All your exterior electric, electrical, all your luminaries, like this one, and the meter, you know, they, they should all be sealed to help prevent moisture from getting into the walls. Now around here, brick is a very good building product. Okay, it's a very awesome building product. This home could burn down and you can reuse the brick. This is a rain catchment system next to the electric receptacle outlet. You can get in here. I know it's not GFCI protected, but you know, diligence. No, you're not. Doesn't have any use cover. Probably not the best placement for a rain catchment system. Rain catchment systems are beyond the scope of this inspection, but this one's coming apart. So I don't know how much rain you're going to catch that way. I don't know how good that's going to work. The brick is also porous. 
So when the lawn sprinkler system hits it, when rain hits it, the water goes right straight through the brick. Even though it's a very good building system, very good insulator. And so we have weep holes. And most of the time, you're just going to see, you're not going to see anything. Most of the time, this is going to be water vapor coming out, you know, allowing your walls to dry. It's the, our building science. We know how to do this. But when you have fenestrations, like doors and windows, now these plates, okay, are called lentils, we should have weep holes above our windows and our doors. Not the wooden windows, so you're not supporting brick. These lentils are supporting the brick. They've disrupted the drainage plane, and we should have lentils there. Soil's a little high right here. Okay. High soil on the east side of the garage. High soil on the west side of the garage. We've got um, our expansion board is rotted on the west side of the garage. We got boards, and they can use boards. Boards are acceptable. They're the you know, least favorite, the most economic way to handle this. But when you get them, and oh, yeah, we got 15 cents. We got some rotten expansion joint board underneath the patio east window. Our screens are all torn. They're showing signs of the age. Um, we got some fogging going on. No rest for the wicked. Moving on out. More rotten fascia board right there. Underneath, because of the way the roof covering video will learn. We got a little bit of cracking right in here. I was going to show you the bent door. Now, this panel doesn't close light and it's bent, but. Um, Got a little off track. Yeah, I guess I must have left it open. I didn't think I had. We got some separation between the garage casement and then also between these soldier bricks. And that goes over here as well. Separation. Got a little bit of movement in the garage area. Bushes too close to the house, just like before. We talked about the satellite dish on the roof. We talked about that. Just kind of moving on along. Oh, I knew. It. This side, this is the west side. This is a post tension slab foundation. There's a couple different types of post tension slabs. I don't know which type this is, but it's post tension. So, um, but what we got here, see those holes? That's the tension in, that is the cable ends. And those are supposed to be cut. See how they're rusting and everything? Those are supposed to be cut off. And sealed up we didn't see them on any of the other sides of the house just along the west side we got a lot of exposed post tension cables when the metal rusts, it expands when it expands it's going to cause cracking you know because it's going to push the foundation it's going to cause cracking unnecessary cracking in your floor if one of those things goes it's actually kind of expensive to have a, a, a post tension cable replaced uh, some people forego that altogether I don't know you know I wouldn't but um, I do a lot of things, but I wouldn't do that. But we've got some exposed post tension cable ends right here, and there's a couple more a little farther down. I'm just kind of moving on along. Over here, this should be marine grade. It should have been marine grade sealant, and it wasn't. But you know, you think water can get in there in your wall? I do. So that's what I think. So this this needs to be resealed. The electric meter and these disconnect boxes should all be sealed on three sides, the sides and the tops, to help prevent moisture from getting into the wall system. The bottoms are supposed to be left open so water, any water that gets in there can get out, kind of like the weep holes. We shouldn't have all this wood next to the house. That's, you're just asking for it. It's like, come on over, Mr. Termite. I got some dinner for you. It's like a truck stop for, for traveling termites.
Okay, this is the piping for the water heater. This should have been sealed up where it's coming through here. Okay, you think water can get in there? I do. Water can jump right off in there. There's another exposed tension cable in. And again, the bushes are too close to the house. These are not retaining walls. This is landscaping. Okay, but the, these boards, these landscaping boards is around the house. You can see they're starting to give it up. I mean, they last about 14 years. Bushes too close to the house. We already had this discussion. Moving on along. I told you we had, there, there's another tension cable in right there. There you are. I see you. There's one right. Aren't you hiding back? No, maybe not. Moving on along. We had this in our water meter video. This is where the main water shutoff valve is on this corner. The one we can't find. Rain gutter too close, do not have kick outs. Oh, well, look at there. I have to come back and redo my notes. Look at the separation. We do not have, this is an arch. Okay, so we do not have a lintel here. Look, over these windows, we have arches, and the arches support the brick. Like a Greek arch, Roman arch. Is it Roman Greek? Like a Greek Roman arch. But over here, we got a lot of our mortars come loose underneath the, the arch over this window right here. I'm going to have to bake that into my notes. We're just about where I started. So I won't forget that. Those light fixtures should be sealed. 